found ourselves on this little patch of sand halfway between Australia and Indonesia. Stoked! Good morning and welcome back to another episode. Unfortunately, this is all that remains of that little shelter we built yesterday. For those that are just tuning in, this might be the craziest adventure we've been on. We've found ourselves on this little patch of sand halfway between Australia and Indonesia. Uh, there's no way of getting home until a couple of weeks time when we can hitchhike a lift home. At this point, day two or three, we're starting to wonder whether it was such a good idea or not. We've had a couple of sleepless nights a bit of a, a bit of a rundown when we arrived here we thought we'd be on our own we thought we'd just be in this paradise place but um, kind of on sunset the first night some shadows emerged and they turned out to be Indonesian fishermen that whole interaction was quite nerve-wracking but then throughout the night they um, they've been walking around the island with little head torches on and you're trying to get a blink of sleep and then we've heard rummaging through our like campsite and friends like oh hey, check 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 someone someone's in the camp um, like I said, we are on it. So I've come out swinging a machete at one point, and then there's a, there's a guy there. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. He's just asking for a lighter. Uh, he wanted a, a cigarette. I'm like, man, it's the middle of the night. It's not the time to be asking for a lighter. So there's been a couple of those instances throughout the night. And then the other one, we heard some heavy breathing outside of our camp and some slapping, and friends like, check, check, check. Like, and anyway, we open up the tent and in the moonlit night, we see this huge, huge green turtle that has decided to come up um, and, and lay. But before they actually lay, they walk you know, around around the whole campsite there. And so that was, once again, had us on edge. Uh, we, we moved our swag so she could end up laying. So now I must admit we are a little bit sleep deprived, but the good news is the Stogs of Ingo is still afloat. We are, uh, spirits are high and we're gonna get in the boat and go and explore um, some different parts of this reef here today. So the best thing about this place is there's huge deep water that comes right up to the shallows. Um, and today we're gonna go drift along that and see what big animals we can see. It's gonna be awesome. next to the swat and when the turtle came buried somewhere here <laughs> boy flew it back and then buried it all right so oh. we're up oh <laughs> no way that's gonna look so staged but no I don't <laughs> You just had to reenact the turtle, Brad. What? I, I told you God. I left it there. I swear to God, I didn't do that on purpose. That is amazing. <laughs> so we've been we've been feeling around for about 45 minutes, obviously away from where the turtle laid its eggs over there. But yeah. well done. <laughs> Well, there's a fair bit going on out here to worry about. Thankfully, on this trip, the body's health isn't one of those things because I've loaded up on athletic greens before the trip. On season one and two of The Great Adventure, I really relied on bush tucker to supplement the diet, but 
what I found as the weeks turned into months, man, we really started to fatigue and the body's immune system just couldn't keep up with any little cuts. It actually brought season two of The Great Adventure to an abrupt halt when that cut on my leg got quite infected. It was after that that a couple of you viewers recommended that we try Athletic Greens. And I'm so glad we did. It tastes great and a big one for me out here is it's just so damn convenient. So packed into this, there's 75 minerals, vitamins, superfoods, basically everything your body needs to keep firing at 100%. That's gonna help with your energy levels, your focus, your gut health, and a big one for me out here is the immune system. If you'd like to try some, the link is in the description. I actually reckon a heap of the B2B viewers would get a lot out of Athletic Greens, whether it's because you're camping remote out in this kind of a setup or if you're just flat out at home and you want something convenient. Now's the time to give it a crack, guys. Our mates at Athletic Greens are giving all B2B viewers five free travel packs, as well as a year's supply of vitamin D. So the link's in the description, give it a crack. And unfortunately the salty dingo hasn't fixed herself overnight. This one here is the one I'm most nervous about. Just hope that that crack doesn't come down any further into the hull, otherwise really it's all over. Other than that, Fran, what, what's our plan today? Try and get a fish. Is there any preference? Dog tooth, wahoo? Oh, dog tooth probably, but yeah. um, I put it in my hole as well. <laughs> Not to be greedy. We did, um, generally the Wahoo, as I'm sure a lot of you viewers would know, they're in really deep water, but yesterday we we're having to swim around in the shallows, literally in eight meters of water, crystal clear reef. And I couldn't believe my eyes, this huge Wahoo swam through and um, yeah, had a good look at me and just kept on cruising, but it was a massive fish. And to see a wahoo in that shallow, surely that's a good sign that if we dive some of these right areas, yeah, it could really be on out here. shaking at the moment here so we're about to jump in in the deep blue this is what it's all about for me hey we've come out here to the middle of nowhere and hopefully we can bump into some you know some big ocean deep sea monsters down there like dog to tuna the whole reason this remote location came onto our radar was in search of one specific fish the dog tooth tuna it was the obsession with this fish that drove us to form the outrageous plan that got us here. I'd studied the charts for months and highlighted this as a likely spot. As the bubbles are still clearing from my mask, I spot the telltale sign of a dog tooth tuna, that white dot just at the base of its tail. And judging by the amount of fish life here, we are right on the hot spot. These rainbow runners and walls of surgeon fish are such a good sign. These are a favourite food for the dog tooth tuna. I sink into a free fall and try to relax. And then out of the depths appears the unmistakable grin of a big dog tooth tuna. But this big girl is too big for us to eat all alone. Doggies love areas with really strong currents and the game plan is for us to find the hot spot and then at the turn of the tide we're going to have about half an hour where the current drops and we can both get in the water. It's 
so good down there. So good news is there is just so much life, like schools of barracuda, surgeon fish, and a smaller doggy came in. So I dove down on him just to check him out. I'm like, that's a good sign, there's doggies here. And then a big one came in, eh? Like a really, really nice one. I was like, oh, I prayed it's so good in there, eh? I can't wait for you to get in as well. I've just done another drift and we found a school of dog tooth tuna down there. So uh, we're going to try and anchor the boat and position so both Fran and I can get in and see if we can get one of these like monsters of the deep to come up and present a shot. It's, uh, it's never easy, but we'll see how we go. Fran, are you excited to get in the water with a couple of doggies down there? I'm really excited. Yeah. Um, this kind of diving takes a heap of teamwork, so that's why we've now anchored the boat. I'm going to see if yeah we can work together as a team, bring these fish up, and then hopefully they present a shot. We'll see you underwater. Wish us luck. Fran's straight into the action and makes a really deep dive. Spotting a couple of nice dog tooth tuna down in the depths. She takes the shot and this is what these fish are renowned for. They are so strong. The spear is attached to a 30 meter float line and a float on the surface. But these fish will drag both the float and us under no worries. You right? Once Fran catches her breath, she's in for the tug of war of her life against this big dog tooth tuna. So what was it doing? Talk us through the dive. So, <laughs> so the bottom is 30 meters and we had flasher on and then him and his friends would just stay at the bottom. This one just got interested and presented the shot and there we go. Nice friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well done, Fran. All right, with Fran's big tuna there, we've now definitely got enough for lunch and dinner and probably a good feed tomorrow. So we've now come back into the, the reef edge here and the water's so clear. So we're gonna jump in and have a bit of a snorkel and see what we can see under there. How's the anchor set, Fran? Good?
Got it. <laughs> so what's the processing line? I feel it. You feel it. You and turn it into sashimi. Yep. How'd we go? Can I have the first one? Go for it, Fran, you've earned it. Good. Is it good? So good. Awesome. So we got soy sauce, just in a dipping bowl. Mm. Fresh sashimi. Yum. Oh, that? Oh, wow. It's really good. A bit of lemon on it is actually really nice. Yeah, let me feed you. Yeah. Yeah, feed me. <laughs> Here, now I'll put it in there. <laughs> yeah. I wonder whether we'll have any um, unannounced strange company tonight, friend. Like, oh, like the last couple of nights. <laughs> Foreign fishermen or turtles or... You never know what we'll bump into out here. All right, the sun's setting on a, another just incredible day out here. So the good news is we can't see another boat on the horizon. There's no one within Kui. Um, so fingers crossed we don't have any sort of unannounced visitors throughout the night, but you never know what the night will bring. So we'll see how it all plays out. Uh, we're going to kick back for five, ten minutes, then we'll light the fire. And then it's dinner time. So we're going to have those dog tooth tuna steaks. It's going to be awesome. What's cooking? Good looking? Dinner steak. Doggy steak. Man. How would you like them? Medium rare, please. That's it. Go for it, rip into it. <laughs> awesome. Mm -mm. We do have a couple of pumpkins just cooking up on the fire as well, but that can be dessert because we couldn't wait a second longer to get into this doggy. <laughs> um, well, Fran, hopefully there are no unwelcome visitors throughout the night, hey? Because I know we're both due for a sleep. <laughs> Hope not. And that's awfully bright, so I don't know how <laughs> we'll get to sleep now. But, yeah, hopefully no turtles, hopefully no foreign fishermen, and we can sleep through the night. And, guys, we are really just getting started out here. This is day three of plenty more to come. So if you're enjoying this, please subscribe to the channel. We'll see you guys bright and early in the morning, and fingers crossed we get a good night's sleep. Good night. Good night. Thanks for watching. <laughs> yeah.